Hello guys, today we're working on something interesting, a uh, solid state drive. It's a SanDisk solid state drive that came from far, far away. This was sent in from Germany. I have two here, probably guessing right. One will be our parts slash donor plus test board. And the second one is what client sent in to get data recovered off of. I already checked it out as much as I could. I even tried to uh, revive it through um, attaching this uh, connector, but a picture says a thousand words. So let me just uh, tell you a thousand words by showing you this. I don't know exactly what went down, but uh, there are multiple layers affected. Uh, and in the event of previous repair work that the client performed, or the shop that sent it performed or maybe it's been somewhere else before uh, the it looks like there is uh, a problem with the original controller which is uh, 2082 00270-1 it's a similar controller to what uh, SanDisk puts on their um, uh, uh, CF cards and uh, I have a donor that I picked up from uh, eBay that arrived just not too long ago that will serve a purpose of a working platform understanding that if the controller is harmed and if I'm working already uh, with the device uh, that had something fried uh, we might as well just take the memory out and swap it on to uh, something that is functional something that is confirmed that's that's working that's gonna give us data so in order to confirm that it's working it's actually fairly uh, simple to uh, to test as you can imagine all we're gonna need is a USB cable and a quick little SATA adapter uh, with the SATA adapter I'm gonna hook this up to uh, the USB port and that's gonna go into the deep spar uh, USB stabilizer our studio We see this uh, Seagate USB, that's uh, the device um, because it's connected to a Seagate uh, enclosure. Uh, it shows up as Seagate, but this is our unit. And if we go into um, hex view and scroll through it, we see that there's some activity that's being performed over there and location of uh, uh, logical block address changes as we scroll through. So what do we need to do? The easiest and the simplest way, assuming that uh, our memory on the patient is still good, would have been uh, obviously swapping out the controller. But here's the thing. If the board has uh, something damaged on it that originally fried the controller of the uh, uh, SSD that was sent in, why risk that extra uh, possibility of frying this controller if the short isn't taken care of and if it's going to affect the controller right away when we have a fully functional board uh, that has exact same controller and we know that this board isn't uh, special it doesn't have any unique encryption it doesn't have any unique relationship with memory and uh, spec wise our devices are the same uh, they both have four memory chips uh, they both have 128 gig capacity chipset is all the same so for me, honestly, it's no big deal uh, to move all four chips or just move one controller. Relatively, will take almost the same amount of time, but I don't want to put an extra risk of harming the uh, good controller by putting it on this board in an effort to save myself 10-15 um, minutes. Even though we're not doing anything with the donor directly, uh, I'm still going to go ahead and mark uh, the chips as they come out. So this is three this is four this is two and that's gonna be one put on fume extraction fume extractor is on lock this in place
all right so I'm gonna let this cool off naturally and we'll step to the um, patient for now all right let's take off the uh, patient's memory I don't know why, but for some reason this <laughs> this process is smelling like a like some type of perfume, like a men's perfume. I can tell that these chips had been taken off before. Today I'm gonna use uh, this new paste I got for the first time so not sure how that's gonna go I'm gonna line it up with the spatula just gonna get a little bit of paste and work that paste into the stencil keep pressure on the chip That went real pretty well. I actually really liked the way that paste performed. It was quick. So with the end chips prepped up, I just wanted to uh, uh, clean up the pads on the um, original board of the donor. And that was it for my flux.
all right I think now we're done give it a little bit of time to cool off check the schematic make sure everything is good close it at the bottom Code at the top, code at the top, and yeah, it makes sense. All right, let's connect this, and power on our device. We get the capacity, task mounts. Let's open up a new uh, our studio screen. And if everything went well, we'll have Seagate 120 with the um, content that we needed to recover. So this is the partition we're going to probably need to get. If we go into View and Edit, we see it's NTFS. Let's go and bring up our device here. You guys can see we're scrolling it it's showing some activity and as always I like to show that it's navigating the map and uh, is able to communicate SanDisk uh, solid state drive SSD recovered 128 gig so now it's just a matter of getting this cloned and sent back to the client if you guys have any questions drop them in the comment section below thank you very much for watching if you're interested in data recovery don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button to know when the next video comes out uh, it's been fun thank you I'll see you in the next one